before we begin, we want to acknowledge that uh, the CRD operates uh, within the traditional territories of Coast and Strait Salish and Nechalnoth peoples. I'm James Lamb. I'm the manager of the CRD Arts and Culture Support Service. We have three services around grants. Uh, we also look after the Royal Theatre and the McPherson Theatre funds that come through uh, via those owners. And Jen Nichols, who's just run out to see our tech person, is our community outreach coordinator. And she's responsible for setting up the webinars and the workshops that some of you um, uh, have attended already uh, in the past in person. Uh, what we're going to cover today is a little bit about what the Arts and Culture Service does overall. We're going to cover, uh, as mentioned, uh, the purpose of this day is to talk about the grant programs. We have five grant programs. We're going to talk a little bit about the resources that are available to you to get information about the programs and about what else we do uh, in addition to things like these webinars. As I say, this is the first, actually the second one we've done. And uh, then we're going to give you lots of time for questions. So uh, a little bit of background about the service. Uh, we are actually established by a bylaw, 2884, in case any of you ever want to look that up. We have a mission to support, promote, and celebrate the arts. Right? So we support through funding, through our grant programs. We promote through information sharing and reporting and outreach. And that's not only for the information of the community for what they are paying for through their tax dollars, but it's also to inform policymakers about uh, what's needed in the community. Uh, they're the ones who make decisions about money, about policies, about programs, that kind of stuff. And the celebration piece, we do uh, convening events, we have conversations about uh, issues related to um, things that concern people in the arts sector and beyond. Uh, currently, nine out of 13 CRD jurisdictions participate in the arts service. Those include municipalities and an electoral, a couple of electoral areas. Uh, so they include Saanich, Victoria, Oak Bay, Esquimalt, V Royal, Machosan, Highlands, Souk, and Southern Gulf Islands. Uh, it's the first year for uh, Southern Gulf Islands and uh, Souk as well. So, next slide. One of the reasons we, the uh, region puts money into the arts is for the benefits uh, that result. So improved quality of life, well-being, lots of activities, of course. Uh, employment. Uh, the BC is actually, on a per capita basis, one of the largest, um, uh, um, uh, what has the largest preponderance of artists, according to Stats Canada. A local economic development, uh, as well as a profile for the region, nationally, provincially. All right, so these are some of the benefits that um, have accrued as a result of the funding through the CRD and uh, the participating municipalities. We did an uh, economic impact study, $177 million in GDP, just for the greater Victoria region. You can see over 730,000 attendants uh, at CRD-funded events in 15. That's our most recent um, uh, accurately completed figures. We did a general population survey a couple years ago, showed 23% of CRD residents volunteer in the arts. That's actually higher than the Canadian average. And uh, you can see on the right side, we have about $2.5 million in grants in total. And last year, that went to 83 organizations. So these are our funding programs in 2019. We have five of them. Operating grants is the biggest ones, $2.2 million. Project grants, $200,000 budget for two deadlines. Incubator grants, 25,000, equity grants, 25,000, and idea grants, which is something we're reintroducing, uh, is about $30,000. This is the general eligibility. We're going to get into it now with programs. General eligibility for most of our programs, with one exception that we'll talk about, applicants have to be a not-for-profit society registered in BC. You have to be based in a participating municipality or, or electoral area, so you need to have a physical address in one of those uh, participating areas. And you must present your event or, or carry out your event within a jurisdiction that contributes to the service. And along the bottom, again, we read out the list of those contributing municipalities, and uh, there are nine of them right now. Interesting enough, Sydney was in last year, and they uh, withdrew. They chose to withdraw. As a result, a number of organizations that used to receive funding are no longer eligible. Um, 
and we hope that they'll come back someday. So we'll start with operating grants. We're just going to do a quick survey of all these programs in terms of eligibility and what they generally do, and hopefully you'll recognize yourself or your organization in one of them, and that'll trigger any questions uh, at the end of the session. So operating grants is the biggest one. This supports larger organizations. Uh, they typically have uh, a larger structure. They have maybe staffing, typically staffing, not always, but they have the capacity to maintain ongoing annual operations. There's a minimum budget size required to apply to operating grants. You need to have a minimum budget of at least 50000 That's uh, a little bit under review right now. Uh, that size has been in existence for probably close to 20 years, and so we're thinking about changing that because 50000 isn't really that big for operating grants. The other thing with operating grants is that you have to have received at least one project grant application. And so operating grants and project grants are solely for organizations with a sort of a, for lack of a better term, a pure sort of arts mandate. So your primary mandate in order to be eligible for operating grants has to be uh, arts presentation or arts production. Okay. So last year, 29 organizations were funded. And these include everything from the big organizations that most of you have heard of, you know, the opera, the symphony, the art gallery, to uh, much smaller organizations like uh, the Early Music Society, Theater Scam, um, Atomic Vaudeville. A couple of choirs are in the operating grant mix as well. Um, the list of all the funded organizations is on our website. So. Uh, What's really useful for organizations is to look at those previously funded organizations and you'll recognize yourself in them and that often uh, helps you figure out what program uh, you're eligible for. The next program that we have that's solely for arts organizations, arts mandated organizations, is the project grant uh, program. It supports new recurring activity by established organizations or emerging organizations. Uh, project grants will support not only one-off uh, sort of events, but it'll also support what we think of as sort of small operating applications. So, for if, for example, an organization has a whole series of events throughout the year, but they're they're really sort of on the small side; they're not uh, they don't have a lot of infrastructure, or they don't want to do a 12-page application versus a two-page application. They can apply for that type of work as well through project grants. So either one-off or ongoing sort of programming on a smaller scale. The disadvantage, of course, of that with project grants versus operating grants is that project grants aren't uh, ongoing funding, whereas with operating, you're typically into a program that uh, will give you recurring support on an annual basis. So project grants is always kind of considered one-off and uh, quite competitive in terms of uh, the deadline and whether or not uh, you can get a grant or not. So again, I'd encourage you to look on the website for a list of organizations that have gotten grants before through project grants. They're everything from um, community arts councils, uh, William Head on Stage, which is a theater company that takes place, uh, presents in a federal prison uh, out on William Head, all sorts of music ensembles, choirs, um, visual arts groups, and so on. People often ask, how much can you get through a project grant? I, what I will say is that it's primarily determined by need, what you can make a case for in your application. But uh, grant amounts you'll see on the website have ranged everything from $1,000 to probably topping out around twelve dollars or $13,000. And as I mentioned before, I think, if I didn't, applicants have to show activity for at least six months prior to the deadline. right? So, uh, in other words, your registration has to be, have been active for at least six months prior to applying for a project grant. Uh, incubator grants. This is one of our new programs. We piloted it for the first time last year. This was one of the programs we started as a result of uh, building our arts futures together, our community engagement process and our strategic planning that some of you probably were part of back in 2016. So we funded this uh, for the first time last year. We're in our second year this year. Incubator grants is for uh, new or emerging organizations, but it's really about capacity building, uh, an organization that needs help getting started, uh, 
uh, it will pay for, uh, when we say capacity building, we're talking about things like board development or um, uh, kind of figuring out how to organize your management structure, uh, development of a project that uh, sort of is nascent, sort of really needs a little bit of a kickstart, but you, because you're so new, you, you don't have any other resources. It'll also pay for uh, expertise, like mentoring, or if you have uh, the need for someone with particular, um, a particular skill set to come in and help you, say, set up your books, that type of thing. Uh, incubator Grants has a maximum uh, grant of $5,000. You do have to have an arts mandate, and these are some of the things that I've already mentioned. Shared staffing, uh, specific expertise, mentoring, uh, if you're a brand new company and you just have no idea how to, you know, find space to get something going, uh, this program will potentially pay for things like workspace or a rehearsal space on a short-term basis, right? To sort of get that idea for your organization uh, started. Uh, this is an example of an organization that's been around for a while that actually got an incubator grant. They've been around for, I think, 30 years or so. And they were trying to reinvent themselves because they are uh, an old discipline, uh, a long-standing discipline, and uh, and they're just sort of trying to reinvent their organization to make themselves more relevant for both their mem members as well as for the community. And so they were one of the first to get an incubator grant last year. Equity grants. This is the second program that we piloted last year. Uh, second year, this year. Uh, this is one of the few organizations that doesn't specifically require you to yourselves to be a not-for-profit, but I should say that what this is intended to do is to support arts initiatives by applicants who have been uh, either not successful or not able to get funding uh, through us in particular because of systemic reasons. Uh, so Either we haven't considered them to be an arts form within the context of our other programs, or they have difficulty for other reasons. Now, for example, uh, you'll see the two pictures there. The one on the left, uh, my left, your left, is uh, an ASL video that we have. So we're trying to make our information available to the deaf community. Uh, we also, on our website, have audio only for those who are, have low vision issues. Uh, we have a whiteboard video that explains our programs in very, very sort of simple terms. And uh, so if you are of a community that, say, typically might be something like um, First Nations, maybe LGBTQ, uh, involved in an arts discipline of another culture that didn't fit into our other programs, these are some of the groups that we're trying to um, give access to through this program. It's a, a $5,000 maximum, like incubator, and it'll support specifically things like artistic growth or creation or development of an art project or an event. Um, one of the interesting things about equity grants is because we went into equity grant, uh, the equity grant program thinking and realizing that we the reason for it is that we didn't really know what all the art forms really were for cultural reasons, for community reasons, whatever. We don't have all the answers. Within equity grants, we allow a group of people or an organization to self-identify as an eligible group. So basically, we're asking you to tell us what the group is, what the art practice is, and to make an application on that basis. The other thing that we acknowledge with equity grants is that some of these uh, groups or new organizations that we haven't previously funded may not meet our current criteria to be a, um, a registered society. So in order to get around that, we allow within equity grant programs, and this is the only program we allow that, we allow an equity grant applicant that's not a society to find a sponsor society to act on their behalf, right? So if you're a group of uh, artists or a part of a community that wants to drive a project, and that's also really important in equity grants, so we want that group 
the equity group to be driving the project, not the organization uh, necessarily. So your group gets together, you find a society, you make an application to equity grants, you use a self-identifying form, you make an application. Um, there's some ineligible activities in most of these programs uh, around capital projects. We won't fund uh, like building things. We won't fund fundraising or uh, contests, scholarships, competitions. Within equity grants, because part of what we acknowledge our uh, practices are sometimes around cultural practices, and cultural practices may involve food or um, spiritual activities. Unlike other programs where we prohibit the funding of religious activities or the purchase of uh, you know, major amounts of food, within equity grants within certain program or within certain uh, applicants, you can make a case for a spiritual activity or um, the need to have food at your event. Uh, you can make that part of your application under equity grants. We covered the sponsor society, right? So the arts mandate by the group is not required. Uh, or the art, I'm sorry, the arts mandate by the sponsoring society is not required. It's really just the mechanism for the group to come forward with the project, right? But the key thing, again, I just want to reiterate, is that under equity grants, what we're really looking forward to is a project that's driven by the group, not driven by the sponsoring society. And we're going to get to idea grants in a second. Example of an equity grant program, the Quadra Village Community Center created a traditional drum making and painting workshop for their community, which was very successful from all accounts. So the idea grant program, this is a little bit of an anomaly, uh, but what idea grants does is it is not for, it's intended for organizations who aren't arts mandated, right? And what it does is it encourages art programming by non-arts mandated organizations to use the arts to further their mandate. So this is a little bit different from, uh, I was talking about equity grants where we, where we don't want the sponsoring society to be, to be driving the program. In the case of an idea grant program, it actually is a society that's a non-arts organization but says, hey, we can create programming that drives our mandate by using uh, arts programming. Uh, Idea Grants was last run ending 2016, and we put it on a hiatus during our community engagement process. Uh, we created the idea or the um, incubator and equity program, and what the equity program did last year was it really made us realize that the Idea Grant really fulfilled uh, a gap in our programming, which was the non-arts organizations doing arts programming. So if you're that kind of organization, I encourage you to look at idea grant programs. $3,000 maximum, organizations without an arts mandate will pay for production, creation uh, uh, of uh, uh, something using the arts. And typically what happens is an organization will, will use, to, use the grant to hire artists, and that's kind of a great thing for us. Yeah, the we, the we Rage, We Weep Society, thanks, Jen, which is a group that worked with Alzheimer's, uh, people with Alzheimer's, and uh, they got an idea grant program to run a visual arts and um, uh, a dance program for people with Alzheimer's, their caregivers and family members. So there's an organization of a non-arts organization who saw an opportunity to use the arts to benefit their mandate and their clients. Some of the resources, uh, you're on this webinar, but what we do encourage everyone to do, particularly if you're a first-time applicant, is to call us or email us directly. Uh, talk to someone here about what your organization does, what your project is about, and so we can stream you into the right program. There's nothing worse than starting an application, submitting it, and uh, us realizing that it's really not the right program for you. Uh, so save yourself some time and effort and make sure you get streamed into the right program. All the guidelines and information sheets are available on the website. You'll see it on that third bullet. Uh, also on the website, we have frequently asked questions on every program. 
examples of funded organizations, uh, all those lists uh, of organizations that we funded are on there. The steps on how to apply, and also uh, we do various outreach events like this. So the webinar, we do in-person workshops and that type of thing. Uh, I think our standard is if you can get together six or ten people or six or ten organizations uh, that want to uh, have an in-person workshop, then we'll do our best to accommodate you and come and meet directly. Because we find that the uh, sort of one-on-one, -on -one, uh, in-person um, contact is really sort of the best way to get all the questions answered. So deadlines that are coming up, we've already passed one project grant deadline in January. Equity incubator and idea grants is a one year once a year deadline in the spring. The next one is March 28th, 4.30 p.m. The next project grant deadline is May the 9th and operating grants happen uh, once a year in September. I don't imagine most of you are operating grant um, eligible at this point anyway. So project grants, if you're an arts organization, or equity incubator and idea grants are probably uh, what most of you are looking for at this point. To uh, call us, this is our main number, 250-360-3215. When you call that number, you'll probably get Heather Haywood uh, on the phone, and Heather's been with us for close to 15 years. She knows the grant programs uh, probably as well as I do. Uh, she probably answer 90% of your questions and be able to stream you to the right grant program. And if there are any other questions, uh, you can by all means call me directly, or Heather will uh, for sure put you on to me if there are questions that she can't answer. And uh, Jen is also available to answer any questions you have about our outreach. Uh, any upcoming workshops and that type of thing. This is our main email, artsdevelopment at crd.bc.ca. And uh, by doing that, you can um, not only ask us questions, but if you're eligible for an application, we are happy to send you the application forms.